Multivariable calculus, we're in lesson 15.10, the last section in the chapter. And we're spending two days here, day one. Uh, you can look at our learning target. I can change variables using the Jacobian. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But changing variables is the name of the game here. Uh, last year, we used a change of variables. We used a U substitution to simplify an integral. The same can be done with double integrals. We're going to see that relatively soon. Uh, so let's just say that you have equations. x is a function of u and v, and y is a function of u and v. It will allow you to write a function of x and y in terms of u and v, which will then allow you to rewrite your integral as an integral in the uv plane. And a transformation would look something like what you're seeing here in this picture, going from a xy region to a uv region. And again, why? Why would you do this? Well, perhaps you're going to wind up with a simpler kind of a region, a region that might be considerably easier uh, to work with and to integrate over. So our first example is actually not really... Uh, performing calculus, we just would like to change from one system to another. So take a look at example one here. Uh, it says a transformation is defined by x equals u squared minus v squared, y could equal uh, 2uv. Uh, here it is told to us that we would have such a relationship. Uh, but let's find the image of a square and this square s I've already depicted down below. Your u is between 0 and 1, and you can see that we've got a u axis as if we had an x axis. And uh, we'll just go out from 0 to 1. Likewise, our y will be uh, acting as if it were a v, or I should say our v is our dependent variable. So we've got a v axis. So we have a square, in other words. And uh, I've labeled these sides, side 1, side 2, side 3, and side 4. And, of course, we'd like to find out what this square would look like over this transformation. So, let's just go side by side and see what exactly would occur. So, if we looked at, say, side 1 on uh, what I've just depicted over here, you're going to notice... That, y, uh, that v here on this square would equal 0. And uh, your u is going to span between 0 and 1. So that's right here. I'm tracing over side 1. Your v is equal to 0. Your u spans between 0 and 1. Now, of course, we know x is equal to u squared minus v squared and we know that y is equal to 2uv. But if v is equal to 0, then x is just going to be u squared minus 0 squared. It's just going to be x equals u squared. And our y actually is going to be 2 times u times 0. I hope you can see uh, pretty quickly that we would just have y equals 0. However, this is super, super, super important for you to see. This u squared right here is going to span uh, only from u values between 0 and 1. So, tell you what, I'm going to venture off over here just a little bit. And I'm going to say, look, we graphed a uv uh, you know, image. I'd like to find out what's happening with an xy image. Uh, we know that if u were to equal 0 here, x were, was going to equal 0. And if u was going to equal 1, x would equal 1. All the while, your y values would equal 0. So this right here would be side 1. So it would look something like that, wouldn't it? So that can help us out. You can say, well, wow, that looks exactly the same as what we had over here. It's just that we have different variables. Well, let's realize that things can change in a hurry 
we should see the image of side two and see what's happening. Now, side two, as we come over here, that's uh, going in this direction. This is where your U is going to equal one all the time. And this time your V, remember V is your uh, vertical component here. V is going to go from the U axis all the way up here to the point one comma one. Uh, so V is going to go between zero and one right now. And remember what we have. We have X is equal to U squared minus V squared. Uh, and we have Y is equal to two UV. And uh, my goodness, as we're working this out, you can pretty much see that uh, with U equaling a one, this would be a one minus V squared. And uh, here we'd have Y would just equal a two V. Now, of course, as we venture off here, this means that V would equal Y over two and I do that so that we can make a little substitution. That would lead us to say that X would equal one minus, well then we'd have Y over two squared. And as we continue working this out, we'll have X is equal to one minus Y squared all over four. It only will take you a moment to see that that's a parabola. And it's a parabola that uh, you might guess is going to be opening towards the left. Uh, we could get confirmation on that quickly. Uh, let's just look at the endpoints of side two, though. I think this can really help us out. Uh, these endpoints for side two, you could say, well, u would equal one, and uh, v could equal zero. And, you know, if we had that, we could say, well, what's going on with our x and our y? Well, Remember, y is equal to two times v, uh, so y would equal a zero if that were the case. By the way, once you know that y is equal to zero, you can even plug that in right here and see that uh, zero squared over four, that's just a zero, and x would equal one. In other words, we're gonna have this point, one comma zero. We also have up here on side two, u equals one and v equals one. If that's the case, well, remember again, y is equal to two times v, so two times one is going to get you a two, isn't it? And if you plug that two back up in here, two squared is four, four over four is a one, one minus one is a zero, you'd get x equals zero. You'll have the point zero comma two, you'd also have the point one comma zero. Well, 1 comma 0 is right here. 0 comma 2 is this point right here. You might believe, it's definitely true, that this is side 2. Side 2 is, in fact, this equation that uh, we have right here. x is equal to 1 minus y squared over 4. And if I multiplied everything by 4, I'd have a 4x equals 4 uh, minus y squared. I could then subtract that 4, and uh, hey, look at that. This might uh, look a little more familiar to you. Uh, so 4x minus 4 equals negative y squared. Sure enough, that is what side 2 is going to look like. Uh, as we continue on, let's just keep going here. If we... Uh, Take a look at side three as we're venturing into side three. Uh, side three on the original UV uh, square here. That's right up at the top, isn't it? We'd say V equals one and U is going to span between zero and one. So once again, we could go through some work and try to figure out what's happening here. We still have x is equal to u squared minus v squared. We still have y is equal to 2uv. It's just now our v is equal to a 1. And 2 times u times 1 is just going to get you a 2u. And u, we could see very quickly, is going to be y over 2. And if we plug that in, you can see this is going to be y over 2 squared minus 1. And that's going to be y squared over 4 minus 1. 
another parabola, isn't it? It's another parabola. And uh, as we're really trying to make sense of this, uh, we could once again do a little bit of work on the endpoints of side 3. You can see side 3 coming back over here. We've got 1 comma 1. We had uh, u is equal to 1, v is equal to 1. We also have uh, at this far left side u equals 0 and uh, v equals 1. And we can think, well, you know, your y again is 2 times u. Uh, so, uh, you know, y right here, u is equal to 1. So 2 times 1 is going to be a 2. And if we go back to this friendly equation with x and y, 2 squared is 4, 4 over 4 is a 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. We'd get x equals 0, wouldn't we? Uh, likewise, if we come over here, uh, plugging in u equals 0 into this equation, 2 times 0 is 0, we'd get y equals 0. If y equals 0, it only takes you a moment to see x is equal to a negative 1. So, yeah, we're going to go from the point 0 comma 2. We're going to come down over here to negative 1 comma 0. And uh, that is, in fact, a parabola. You know, this is side 3. And my goodness, it's the equation, like we saw earlier, x is equal to y squared over 4 minus 1. Multiply everything by 4. You'd have 4x. Uh, here you'd get uh, equals y squared minus 4, but you can add a 4 to both sides uh, quickly coming up with this parabola that would be opening towards the right. Uh, so we're well on our way. We just have to deal with side 4, and we're going to deal with that right now. You might even guess what that's looking like once everything's coming together. Uh, going back to your UV picture, side 4 you're going to see that u equaled 0, and your v now is going to go between a 0 and a 1. And uh, again, side 4, you can see that right here. Well, you know, again, you've got the same basic parameters. x is equal to u squared minus v squared. u is equal to 2u, I'm sorry, y equals 2uv. Uh, but this time with u equaling 0, well, that wipes out. You just have a negative v squared. Uh, y is going to be a 0 as you plug that in. Uh, but, of course, v is going to span from uh, 0 to 1. Uh, if it's 0, you'll be at uh, x equals 0. And if you plug in a 1, you'd be at x equals negative 1. You can quickly see this is your side 4. So, uh, you know, what's your new region looking like? Well, it's what we've just shown you right here. And, uh, you know, one image of a region. You might have the region of a square over here with your U and V. You've got this very different looking region over here. Uh, so where are we going? Well, you can see when you change variables, good things can happen. We're going to get to that. Uh, you might have x as a function of u and v. Uh, and uh, you can find that y might be a function of u and v also. Well, if you take your uh, derivative of x with respect to u, your derivative of x with respect to v, uh, down below in your determinant, take your derivative of y with respect to u, your derivative of y with respect to v, a determinant, take a look here, it's been a while, you've got your four entries, it almost is like you're cross multiplying, but then you got to subtract a times d minus b times c, that's what you're seeing here. Uh, this is called the Jacobian, and the Jacobian is going to help us go from a change in variables. And uh, what you're going to be seeing as we're getting into this uh, video coming up is that when you change from uh, one form of variables to another, the Jacobian is going to be inside your integral as you make that change. And we're going to pick up with a part two of this video uh, going over the last problem that we just did, but doing an integral with it. And we'll do that next.